I am Ron Harold, and I am the owner of Harold Theaters. I general manage the company, and we have a lot of policies and procedures we're laying out now to create um, the future, the new future of the Terrace Drive-In. Uh, the Terrace Drive-In was opened in 1954 originally. Um, I think its uniqueness is the fact that it's called the Terrace for a reason. The Terrace is uh, a tiered setup for its parking area, which is almost like the version of a stadium seating for a drive-in where you park your cars and face the screen. It was one of the earlier theaters in the state of Idaho. 1954 um, to 1984 was the original setup. In 1984, they revamped the uh, Terrace Drive-In and built two additional movie screens, making it a three-screen drive-in. Um, and it's been in operation ever since then. Drive-in theaters, uh, the reason that drive-in theaters are starting to disappear and it's and it's a big issue is one drive-in theaters used to be built in an area outside of the city limits several miles usually depending on the area and as the communities grew the cities would grow outward they would start to engulf or overtake a drive-in theater space um, because of this the value of land would go up um, retirees would start to get to a point in their lives where they have to hand it down to their children. Um, children would decide that th whether they wanted to keep the drive-in or not. Uh, the drive-ins were valuable based on the price of the land. The kids would sell that and uh, take the money for it. In other cases, it was the fact that the drive-in just started losing money because the um, indoor theaters uh, were starting to become more prominent in the industry. Multiplexes were going up in different areas. People had a different option. Back in the day when I first had an opportunity to see uh, a drive-in theater, there was the old speakers, a pole sitting next to the car and you park next to it and you take the speaker and you put it in the window, turn it up and you'd all sit in your car with blankets and pillows and eat your, your popcorn and your candy and, and watch the movie. It's, a, it's an experience and, uh, and it's very memorable to anybody. So I think that's important to keep a tradition and a history alive. We have a lot of changes coming to the Terrace Drive-In here. Um, the Terrace since 1984 has only been operating as a single screen. However, it does have three. Uh, we plan to open up the additional movie screens, uh, so we will at some point become a three-screen drive-in again. We are going to show movies that are either on opening day or within a few weeks of opening. Um, newer releases are uh, exciting because they haven't been seen already, they're new to the public. People have a chance to see them here at the Terrace Drive-In on a 90-foot screen, which is the largest in the Treasure Valley. I think it's important to know that there are a lot of drive-ins in the United States that still haven't had an opportunity to go to digital. Those digital projectors can cost anywhere from sixty dollars to $100,000, depending on the unit and the size of movie screen, um, and the cost incurred for a drive-in to try to accommodate that price on a projector is not easy um, when the studios take a percentage or a, a larger portion of uh, ticket sales. So. Think of your concession stand when you go to a drive-in. The concessions is how the drive-in survives, and let's keep, uh, keep an American tradition alive.